Is that me? Okay. Um, but uh, before we get started with that, I've got a few things to share. Uh, we've got a, a monthly newsletter that, that uh, we are starting to put together. Um, some of y'all should have got that in your email. And if you didn't, there's a hard copy by, uh, on the table by the doors when you come in, if you want to check that out. If you would like to receive that, we're going to be sending that out, I think, once a month, just kind of letting everybody know what's going on around here uh, and, and things that are coming up and, and different things. Um, if you want that, you can, you can get it through email. You just need to email Glenda at tophandcowboychurch.org. That, that, that's, that's the email. You send that to her. Tell her, I want the newsletter. She'll add you to the email list, and you'll get it once a month. Um, and like I said, it's going to be having uh, some different things in there, upcoming events, uh, different things. So it, it would be great, especially for those of you all who, who like to plan. Uh, you're going to want that so you know what's coming up and can add stuff to the calendar. Speaking of the calendar, uh, we're having a, an event December 6th. December 6th. Nobody's writing this down. Okay, there we go. <laughs> December 6th, we're having a, a family day out at the arena. Uh, Cal Kids Arena and Chuck Wagon Team are all getting together to just have a day of fellowship. And so it's right after church on the 6th. Uh, they're going to do hot dogs and stuff. Um, they're going to make, the kids are going to make, I guess you can if you want, but the kids are going to make stick horses and whoever else wants to. And then we're going to have stick horse races uh, in the uh, arena and some other different things. So put that on the calendar. Uh, plan to be here for that. Um, and then the last couple of things, just a reminder of the food drive and the uh, Christmas shoe boxes for kids. If, if you need more info, see the table as you come in. Um, some of y'all may know, some of you may not. Those, those shoe boxes are sent all over the world. And for a child to receive that shoe box, they actually um, are, are taken through a class that explains the gospel to them before they get that shoe box. It's not just that they're just passed out at random, but, but they, are, they are given the gospel. And, and then at that time, they're, they're given the chance to sign up for a class if they want to know more. It's like a six-week training in Jesus. And so those shoe boxes do so much more than just give presents to, to kids. Um, but it's taken the gospel around the world. So if you can help with that, uh, like I said, there's, there's more info. Just, uh, just, just look back there at the table and, and ask somebody about it. Um, other than that, we're, we're excited to worship this morning. Are, are you excited to worship? I, I'm, I'm thankful to be here this morning. I, I don't know about y'all, but, but I, need to, I need to spend some time with God's people this morning and, and worship. And so we're excited about that. Uh, I'll share real quick because I have the microphone. Um, that uh, I've been reading through Genesis here lately, and something has struck me as I've, as I've been reading, reading through it. I'm about halfway through it. And from, from almost the very beginning, when, when God's people respond to God, they do it by bringing some kind of offering to him. We see that with Cain and Abel. We know that story. Um, we see it with, with Abraham. He offered a sacrifice to the Lord at different times. Uh, when Noah came off the ark, one of the first things he did was worship the Lord and offer sacrifices. Uh, when Abraham defeats the four kings and rescues Lot, it says that he took 10% of what he plundered and gave it to Melchizedek, the priest of the Lord. And that was before the law came. That, that wasn't because he was commanded to give 10%. That was a response to his victory. To what God had done in his life, he chose to, 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 to bring an offering to him. When Abraham and Abimelech um, made a treaty, it said Abraham planted a tree and called on the name of the Lord. And what I'm getting at is, uh, there were different ways that people worshiped God. Abraham himself offered sacrifices, brought 10%, and he planted a tree. And in all those things, he was bringing an offering to the Lord. And so we start every service off, you know, thanking God for his provision, thanking God for what he's done in our lives. And we do that out of response, right? Out of response of, of what he has done, especially by offering a savior on the cross. And so we don't take up an offering. We don't, we don't pass a plate. We've got the Dutch oven in the back. If you want to bring an offering, you can put it in there. If you want to bring it um, online, if that's easier for you, you can do it through our website. But all that to say, long before we were ever told in the law to bring an offering, God's people did it naturally. It's a, it's a natural response that we give to him, and it, it's a way that we worship him. And so if y'all would, we're going we're gonna to stand, or y'all are going to stand, sorry. Um, and, and, and pray this morning um, and just thank God for, for what he's done and who he is in our lives. Let's pray. 
God, we thank you. We thank you that you are mighty to save. God, we thank you that you are our provider in every way for every need. God, especially our provider for a way to you. God, through your son Jesus, who gave his life on the cross, was buried, dead, and then rose again on the third day, proving that your way worked. God, that you made a way for us. God, we sing and rejoice now in that truth. God, would you bless this time as we sing and worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, however you want to do it this morning, if you want to sit, you can sit. If you want to stand and sing, stand and sing with us. But let's, let's praise Jesus this morning. Pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground, Lord lift me up. Lord, and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land a higher plane, a higher plane than, than I, I have found Lord plant my feet on higher ground my heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay though some may dwell where these abound my prayer my aim is higher ground Lord lift me up, Lord, let me up and let me stand by faith on heaven Than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale, want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray, but still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane, a higher plane than Lord, plant my feet on higher ground, a higher plane, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. <clears throat> Bring the pain. That you've been hiding Bring your scars And bring your shame Every failure Every secret Bring your fear That things won't change Bring your dreams And bring your worries Highest highs And lowest lows Every hope you pin your heart on, every hurt you can't let go. To the one whose name is healer, to the one who came to save, to the one whose love is 
is stronger than the power of the grave. Come and raise your hallelujah to the God who overcomes. Lift your hands, lift your heart to the one. There is joy and sweet forgiveness where the fountain of mercy flows. Child of heaven, wait no longer. Hear the call and come back home. To the one whose name is Healer, to the one who came to save, to the one whose love is stronger than the power of the grave. Come and raise your hallelujah to the God who overcomes. Lift your hands, lift your heart to the one. He is grace, he is peace, he is light, and he redeems. Lift your voice, lift your eyes, give your praise. Lift your hands, lift your heart to the one. Lift, lift your, your hands, hands lift, lift your heart to the one. Amen. Take and 
shield thee Thou will find a solace there So take it to the Lord in prayer Amen Psalm 25, 1 through 5 says, In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. And my hope is in you all day long. Whatever I face, whatever the fear, whatever the cost, you always draw near. Whatever the pain, whatever may come, whatever may fall, your love overcomes. Your love overcomes. Oh, I will call, I will call upon you. Whatever I face, you are with me. I will fall, I will fall on my knees. For every heartbreak, you are with me. Whatever I face, whatever the fear, whatever the cost, you always draw near. Whatever the pain, whatever may come, whatever may fall, your love overcomes. Your love overcomes. Yes, I will call. I will call upon you, whatever I face, you are with me. I will fall, I will fall on my knees, for every heartbreak you will hold me. You will hold me. So every wall will break, all the darkness shake, all the joy will be renewed. So every knee let's bow, raise a victory shout, for the King will make things new. Every mountain moved, every lie be loose, for your banner will lift in high. But neither depth nor height nor any life could ever cast your love aside. Every wall will break, all the darkness shake, all the joy will be made new. So every knee let's bow, raise a victory shout, for the King will make things new. Yes, I will call, I will call upon you, whatever I face, you are with me. I will call, I will call upon you, whatever I face, you are with me. I will fall, I will fall on my knees, for every heartbreak, you will hold me, you will hold me. I will call, I will call, I will call upon you, whatever I face, you are with me, I will fall, I will fall on my knees, for every heartbreak, you will hold me, you will hold me.
Amen. Would y'all pray with me? God, we thank you. We thank you that no matter what comes, God, whatever may come, we know that you're walking with us, God. We know that we can fall before you. God, cast our cares, our anxieties, our prayers and supplications before you, Lord, and you will hear your children and you will act. God, we thank you for this place where we can come and just be with your people. God, to find encouragement and comfort. And God, we're thankful for your praises, God, as we sing together. May that encourage our hearts. God, we pray for Greg now. As we open your word, God, would you speak powerfully through him? In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Well, this morning, I want us to think about something that's a little bit difficult. So I know when you see the title, you're going to say, well, Greg, you've never been in my circumstances. In everything, give thanks. Now, think about that for a second. In everything, as you drive home with your pink slip to tell your spouse that you no longer have a job, as you walk out of the doctor's office, and you're not expecting to hear the news that you hear, as your precious child makes that one call from jail to say, come get me. In everything? Give thanks? Yes, in everything, give thanks. And we're going to learn today in God's Word, because of Paul's letter to the church at Thessalonica, how we can do that because I'm going to admit to you that I've seen some difficult days in my life and I can honestly say there have been some moments that I have struggled and I'm even going to confess that I didn't give thanks when I should have. But as I grow and mature even in my faith as your pastor and as a believer as a child of the king I'm growing in my knowledge of love and grace that he desires for each of us no matter what the circumstances are, to give thanks to Him. And there's only way we can do that. One way we can do that. And that's in Christ Jesus. So let's look at the fifth chapter of 1 Thessalonians. We're going to look at this chapter. We're going to focus on verse 18 because verse 18 is, I think, very clear, very easy to, to read, but I think we'll learn how to live it as we read verse 18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now let's walk up to that verse by beginning with verse 1. The day of the Lord, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1. Now brothers and sisters, about the times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly. As labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, participating, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not Appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Verse 12. 
Now, as we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who are admonishing you, hold them in highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other, and we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Now, I know there were a couple of moments there you wanted to pause, so don't greet each other today with a holy kiss, okay? We, we, not that we're going to ignore that passage, but I know that some of you just had a catch right there, like, I'm not doing that today, okay? So, I understand that. But I want us to look at what does it truly mean to give thanks in all circumstances, I don't think we can do that. I don't think sitting here right now, you can say, oh, I can easily do that. I think the only way that we can give thanks in all circumstances is through that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because that's the only way that I think we can give pain thanks. That we can give suffering thanks. That we can give brokenness thanks. It's because of his pain, his suffering, and his brokenness on our behalf because of sin in this world, that we can open up a heart of thanks because of the sacrifice that he made for you and I. I want to challenge ourselves today to really begin to understand what Scripture is trying to teach us here. And I, I think when you see before verse 12, I, I know some of your Bibles have like subheadings. It says, final instructions. Now, mom and dad, grandparents, have you ever kind of given final instructions to your children? It's like, okay, Dad and I, we're, we're, we're going to go out for the first time in 14 years on a date. I can't believe we're actually doing this. But here are the instructions. Clean your room. Do the dishes. What, what other instructions? Don't burn. Final instructions, all right? So that, that's, that's good because I needed a final instruction, and that's a good one, right? So listen to me. Here are your final instructions. Don't burn down the house. And no party on while we're going. Some of y'all have more experience that y'all are confessing to than we might need to know. So here's the thing. This is what Paul is saying. Here's my final instructions. So I want to challenge you this week. You need something to do. Amen. So I want you to go read the, the book of 1 Thessalonians. Because I'm getting you to the very end. Five. But I want you to go in there and read what leads up to chapter 5. Because here we are, when Paul says, here's your final instructions, are you listening? See, that's when your mom and dad say, all right, do this, do this. Now, I really need you to listen to this part. Don't burn down the house. Right? This is what Paul's saying. So he, he's preaching, he's writing this letter, but at the very end he's saying, and here's the final instructions. Here's what I really want you to tune into. Here's what I really want you to understand and hear. And we're going to dig into that. Here's the purpose of the letter, to encourage new believers and for others to live a godly life. We need to be encouraged by that, do we not? I was talking with a church member this morning about how important it is. Sometimes some of us need things on our refrigerator. Some of us need things on our bathroom mirror. Some of us need reminders right there on our nightstand. Maybe, maybe we ought to title it Final Instructions. Things that are significant and important to do. How many of y'all need that reminder that says, Check the water. 
you barn people. Anybody here ever let the water run for a night or two? See, final instructions, pay attention, wake up, I need you, this is important. Here's what you need to do. Above all things, don't let the water run for 24 hours. Go check to make sure it's turned off. So see, Paul is saying, hey, new believers, this letter that I'm writing to you, here are the things that are significant. But here's the final instruction I want you to grab hold of. Believers, here I'm going to show you how to live a godly life. But here's this last part of this book, chapter 5. I really want you to sink in and take hold of this. One of the things that I think is so significant, and you tell me if you find this out this next week, over and over in this letter, he addresses brothers and sisters. Who do you say brothers and sisters to? Family, sure. I mean, you're not going to H-E-B and say, hey, brothers and sisters, how y'all doing? No, you're not doing that because you don't know those people. You get to church and you say, good morning, brother. Good morning, sister. Why are you doing that? Because you're family. Paul says that over and over in this letter because he is expressing his love for them. He cares for this church. He cares for these people. You and I need to express that same love and care and concern for one another. So I encourage you as you read this book this week, take note of how many times that he says brothers and sisters. Verses 1 through 11, encourage and build each other up. Verse 1 says, now, brothers and sisters, about the times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night while people are asleep, saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them, and suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that there is, so that there, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You all are children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Here's therefore, verse 11, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. Notice he writes this whole letter. He's coming to the end and he says, I've said all this. Therefore, what I want you to do with the information is I want you to encourage each other. I want you to lift each other up. Don't you think that's what we need right now? encouragement, lifting each other up, praying for those that we know need to be lifted up, sending a text message saying, hey, I hope things are going well for you and your family. I'm praying for you. There is not a greater message that I get on my phone than when I get a text message that says, Pastor, I'm praying for you. I even love it when I don't even have your contact in my phone and I have to say, who is this? That's really encouraging. You encourage someone this week simply by taking the time to do what Jesus has already done for us. He's loved us where we are. Love people where they are. Encourage them to be more like him. Verses 12 through 15 tells us to look around and take care of each other. Again, the subheading final instructions here. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters... To acknowledge those that work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. 
Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. I, I want to go to verse 15 because I, I think it's so important because I, I want you to ask yourself, when it says, make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, you know how to stop gossip? Don't even listen. Would you know, and you know, deep inside, when somebody's saying something, as believers, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to be able to say, are you fixing to lift somebody up? Or are you fixing to put somebody down? Because if you're going to put them down, just stop. I don't want to hear it. If we're going to lift them up, I want to join in with that. Amen? But see, we don't do that anymore. We just let people walk, 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 walk. And then whether we listen to it or not, we may walk away. But we listen to it. We listen to too much garbage. Amen? Instead of reading what God's Word tells us to do, instead of us looking around to see who we can help take care of, it means to take care of the weak. It means to take care of the immature. It means to take care of those that need some strengthening. And you and I are called to do that. How do we do that? Not just with words, but with our hands and feet. We can do this, but we have to make a decision that that's going to be a part of who we are. So how do you rejoice always? Look at verse 16. Two words. Rejoice always. Hmm. Wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning because dogs are barking. Praise Jesus. Is that what we do? You can't sleep. The whole family's gone to bed. Everybody's tucked in. You hear them snoring. Everything's perfectly peaceful. And you're saying, Lord, I really could use some sleep. Why am I awake? Hmm. Why might you be awake? To rejoice? Or are you just complaining about the bad pizza you ate at 11 o'clock? See, we have a choice to make no matter what comes our way. And God's Word tells us, Paul is reminding, in all circumstances, in everything, rejoice always. And then what does the next verse say? Pray continually. As you are rejoicing, pray. As you are rejoicing and praying, give thanks. Why? Because in all circumstances, this is what we're called to do. Why is that? It's God's will. How can it be God's will that the dogs are barking at 3 in the morning and I can't get any sleep? Because he wants you to spend time with his son. Because notice what it says. In Christ Jesus. Every circumstance that we face, we can take to Jesus. Amen? Irregardless of what it is, where it is, or what time it is, we can say, no, Jesus, I need a little help here. We call him our friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. He is our comforter. He is our confidant. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. There's no time that we can't go to him. So surely we can rejoice. Have you ever seen somebody rejoicing when nobody else is rejoicing? You just want somebody to go knock that person in the head, right? Like, dude, chill out. See, when you have the joy of the Lord, you often have that for a reason when you're around people that don't have it. Because you're supposed to be pouring into them. Praying about pouring the joy of the Lord that you have into them. And the only way that you'll do that, and it will be received, is if you do it in the love of Jesus Christ. I would love to force people to accept Jesus Christ. There's no possible way to do that. It's called free will. They have to choose Jesus. You and I have to choose Jesus every day. In every circumstance, the only way we can give thanks is because of our personal walk with Jesus. It's not because of any other reason. It's only because of walking in a relationship with Him. Look at what this next verse says. It says, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Then look at verse 19. Basically what he's saying is, if you're not doing these things, then you're probably going to quench the Spirit. Verse 19 says this, do not quench the Spirit. 
Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Here we go again, brothers and sisters. Pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Verses 19 through 28 here. How can he do it? He can do it because he's God's son. You can't do it without God's son. Amen? How many of you have loved somebody that's hard to love? Do not look to your right or left at this moment, all right? But hey, we all, if we're going to be honest, even as believers in Jesus Christ, there are some difficult people that God brings along our journey that we just privately ask God, are you kidding me? What, how am I supposed to love this person? What, what do I have that can help this person? You know what you have? You have Jesus. You have Jesus to give that person that's obnoxious and you can't stand. And don't act like some of y'all, oh, well, that's no, I've never, I love everybody. Come on now. Even Casey can't say that. Why is that? The only way that we can love each other is because of Jesus. So what does he say here? He will do it. Verse 24, the one who calls you, who calls you? Jesus is faithful. That's what it says. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Paul is saying Jesus will do it if you'll allow Jesus to work through you. That's how you can give thanks in all circumstances. That's how you can rejoice. That's how you can pray. That's how you can send a text of encouragement. That's how you can bake some baked goods and take to somebody and even put it over the fence if you have to. That's how you can reach out and say, okay, hey, I know you, you must be more in a hurry to get to work than I am, so go right ahead, cut right on in. In Jesus' name, I'm rejoicing. You can get to work before me. But I'm going to pray that you get there safely. See, it's all in your attitude and the way that you walk with Jesus is the way that you will reflect to those around you who Jesus is to you. He will do it because he's faithful. Even when you and I aren't faithful, who's faithful? He is. I want to be with the one who's most faithful, and that's Jesus. I want to encourage you today. You say, Brother Greg, I, I don't know. I, I've been in some tough times before, and, and, and I'm still struggling with, with rejoicing. I'm still struggling with giving thanks because I don't think God was fair. Man, I have looked all over my Bible to see where God is supposed to be fair with sinful people. You know where he's been fair? He gave his one and only son to die on a cross. He extends grace to you and I. He led a sinless life and he rose again on the third day just as he said he would. And he's on the right side of his father right now, interceding and lifting you and I up as his spirit works within our soul. I want to pray for you this morning. You want to know how to rejoice? You want to know how to give thanks in all circumstances? Get closer to Jesus. It's the only way that it's possible. Because it literally doesn't make sense when you read it at first. Because the first thing you do is you think of times that you can't give thanks to God. You think of bad moments in your life. Well, there's no way that God was working in that situation. Bad things happen to good people. If you haven't lived long enough and you never heard that, let me be the first one to tell you. But good things happen to those who trust in Jesus Christ. It may not be on this side of the Jordan. It may be on the other. But I want to live like I'm already on the other side of the Jordan because I've got Jesus living within me. Amen? This morning, I want to encourage you. We're going into Thanksgiving. All of the world is falling apart. All the craziness, all the things, whether we can get together for Thanksgiving and all that nonsense. Man, let that stuff go. Amen? Get in the Word. Walk with Jesus. And I promise you, you will find yourself giving thanks in all circumstances.
Stand with me this morning. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that you significantly changed Paul's life. Lord, you changed it in such a way that people were astonished that the one who was going around killing Christians is now the one that writes letters of hope, of faith, of grace, and mercy. The one that is teaching us even today to love like your son has loved. Father, I pray that as we have gathered this morning, that from the depths of our heart we have worshipped you, not only in song, but in word and in spirit. Father, I pray if there's anyone here today that's never made a personal decision to accept your son Jesus Christ, that this would be the day that they would learn to rejoice in all circumstances. Lord, that they would learn that they can give thanks because they are walking with you day by day. Father, would you pour out your blessings on this congregation? Would you help us to love as Jesus loves? Would you help us to live as Jesus lives? Father, bless our time right now as we make decisions to walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. I was a wandering soul Traveling a well-worn road A sinner so far from home With no second chance in sight And I heard you call my name and I felt you lift my shame And I made a vow that day That I'd spend the rest of my life Loving my Jesus And showing my scars And telling of how mercy can reach you where you are. I pray that the whole world hears the cry of my heart it is to see all the ones I love. Loving my Jesus Sin tries to make you hide And whispers that same old lie Keep all your pain inside Cause no one will understand The last thing this lost world needs is someone I'm trying to be Truth that has set me free Is that I'm just a broken man Who's loving my Jesus And showing my And telling my story of how mercy can reach you where you are. I pray that the whole world hears the cry of my heart. It is to see all the ones I Loving my Jesus When all is said and done When my last song's been sung 
I stand face to face with the one who gave all for me. May all I have to show be all that mattered most is making your great name known. Let this be my only legacy. I'm loving my Jesus and showing my And telling my story of how mercy can reach you where you are. I pray that the whole world hears the cry of my heart. is to see all the ones I love. Loving my Jesus, yes, I pray that the whole world hears the cry of my heart, is to see all the ones I love, loving my Jesus. So how many of y'all were thinking of the ones that you love singing that song right then and what it would look like to see them loving Jesus? So if you're wondering what you should be praying for this week, take that song and pray for those that you love that wherever they are, whether they're local or far away, that they might begin loving Jesus the way that you do. Amen? I want to encourage you, we're going to do something di a little different this year at Christmas Eve. We're going to do the Christmas blessing. That's what we're calling it. We have, just like many of us have, we've hopped along through this year. And uh, we're looking at having an end gathering uh, that night for our offering. And so I want to encourage you to be praying about it. You'll get more in the December newsletter about that. But we're excited to see what God's going to do in 2021. He's not done in 2020 yet, so don't be, don't be rushing through this year because he's still got blessings for us, amen? So I hope that as you go this week that you'll be praying for those that you were just thinking about, that you'll be praying for what God wants to do through this church in the coming years, amen? Let's close by singing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so Little ones to Him belong They are weak but He is strong Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Bring the pain that you've been hiding, bring your scars, bring your shame, every face. Every secret, bring your fear that things won't change. Bring your dreams and bring your worries. Highest highs and lowest lows. Every hope you pin your heart on. Every hurt you can't let go. To the one whose name is healer, to the one who came to save, to the one whose love is stronger than the power of the grave. Come and raise your hallelujah to the God who overcomes. Lift your hands, lift your heart, 
to the one there is joy in sweet forgiveness where the fountain of mercy flows child of heaven wait no longer hear the call and come back home to the one whose name is healer to the one who came to save to the one whose love is stronger than the power of the grave come and raise your hallelujah to the god who overcomes lift your hands lift your heart to the one He is peace, He is life, He redeems. So lift your voice, lift your eyes, give your praise, give your life. To the one whose name is healer, to the one who came to save, to the one whose love is stronger than the power of the grave. Come, Come and raise your hallelujah to the God who overcomes. Lift your hands, lift your heart to the one. Lift your hands, lift your heart to the one.